Hi everybody and welcome to today's video. Today I am reviewing an ink from the Birmingham Pen Company. This is Soft Pretzel. This is uh, one of their new formulation inks. <clears throat> I've reviewed and looked at a number of Birmingham Pen Company inks over the last few years and really, really enjoyed them. Those inks were made in Germany for Birmingham Pen Company. So the colours were all designed by uh, the Birmingham Pen Company and uh, primarily Nick there, and then they were made in Germany for Birmingham pens. Now what Birmingham Pen Company has done now is they've started making their inks in-house. So this is one of those inks. This is Soft Pretzel. You can see there it's a sort of a, a pastel sort of warm brown colour. Uh, a little darker than I think of when I think of pretzels, but uh, maybe that's just me. Let's uh, have a look at this ink. So this is how the ink comes packaged. It's in a nice box. I've written soft pretzel there on the top because there is no uh, distinguishing feature on the bottle box as to what ink it is. And I have a number of these, so I can look down the box and see soft pretzel. Um, the bottle is fairly similar to what was originally made. It's the 30 mil bottled, manufactured and bottled by hand, traditional formula, uh, fountain pen ink made in USA. Um, so this is a Three Rivers Stadium soft pretzel. Birmingham Pen Company, Pittsburgh, uh, and yeah, like, you know, nice simple bottle, nice simple packaging. I do like the branding, like the box and the bottle look great. The bottle is wide enough to, you know, fill most pens from, uh, not a super wide neck, but wide enough, I think. So let's look at the ink on some paper. So as always, we start with it here on Tomo River paper. This is 68 GSM Tomo River paper in a Bond travel gear notebook, which is no longer made, uh, but Tomo River paper, the original Tomo River paper. I had it in two pens, both Twisby Goes, uh, which are my sort of standard sort of basic review pens. Not super wet, not definitely not dry. I had it in a broad and in an extra fine. You can see the difference in the writing samples here. Let's start with these five points. As I said, it's new in-house formulation and I'm really supportive of companies doing their own things. As I said in the overview of these inks, I really enjoy companies that make their own stuff, be it you know in-house making of pens, which also Birmingham Pen Company do, or ink, or nibs. I really encourage pen companies to look at manufacturing their own nibs. The nibs are what set the pens apart. The design can be great, the grip can be amazing, but it's the nib that goes on the page. Anyway. Off my soapbox. Um, shading. It's a nice shading ink. Very light in the lighter shading. Perhaps too light for some uses, uh, but that darker, warmer shading is really nice. The ink is super affordable. We'll get into price in a second, but per mill, it's one of the most affordable inks on the market. Um, a slight negative with this ink is that there is a tendency for bleeding. Uh, you do need to use this on good quality paper, like Tom or River, uh, where it performs beautifully. Um, if you use it on lower end paper, you're gonna to need to use it in a very fine nib, as we'll see shortly. Um, and also, it's an interesting color. It's not a straight up brown. Now you can already see from the chromatography here, um, there's lots of blues and pinks and sort of stuff making up this ink. Actually, if we look at the swab here on the side, um, there's lots of different sorts of shading of those sort of colors coming through as well, where the ink is pulled. Let's talk about performance. In a fine nib, obviously the shading is lighter and the ink is less saturated. Uh, so on the lighter shading points, like we see there on the O of Tomoura, Tomoura there, it gets quite light. Uh, it And the, it is less saturated. Uh, it's good on Tomoura paper. I like how it looks here. Um, but it even bleeds in a particularly broad nib on Rhodia, which I'll show you in just a second. Um, I really like the colour. The, it, on this paper and in these pens, it had nice flow, um, but maybe is a touch wet. Like, and that's I think is what uh, accounts for some of the bleeding. Extras with this ink, there's uh, also oh very quickly water resistance. Well, it's not really water resistant, but there's stuff left behind. You can also see that in the chromatography. So like the orangey brown left behind, which it is still legible, but I don't think it can really be said to be water resistance. Okay. That it's a good shading ink. There's no shimmer, although there is like some different colors coming through in the uh, swab there. Uh, and there's uh, no visible sheen. That's what I mean with the colors, sorry, not the sh shimmer. Um, price, $9 US for 30 mils. So pretty decent price. Like it's just slightly more expensive than Diamine, but Diamine is a big company. Uh, 60 mils is 14 US 
and then you can get 120 mils of some of these inks for 19 US dollars, which is a lot of ink. It's more than double the amount of ink from other small manufacturers for that price. So just something to think about. Let's look at it on some other paper. Firstly, here is the Rhodia. Now, on this front page, it looks okay. There might be a touch of feathering here and there, but it looks okay. The shading's nice, the color looks good. The swab there is a little bit weird. Like, you've lost a lot of the shading and it's just sort of gone very matte. And the reason for that is that it absorbs very heavily into the paper. Um, and you can also see there on the reverse of this Rodeo page, just what I mean, like from the extra fine nib on these two lines, you do get a couple of points of it bleeding through, but you do get a, a fair amount of bleeding through on Rodeo from those, uh, from that broad nib. And as we know, the Twisby broads aren't the wettest broads on the market either. Just for the sake of the exercise, just because I have it here in front of me, this is uh, on Midori paper. Um, there's no bleed or anything on there. As I said, with good quality paper, these inks, this ink looks amazing. And I think the performance, like the shading and everything of that looks really great. Um, and the colour is nice. I do like that brown. We do also have it on a couple of lower end papers again. Uh, firstly here, the uh, standard copy paper. You can see the feathering there. And of course... Uh, bleed and it is a this is a not a fountain pen friendly paper but just to be something to be aware of there and then on the very low end student notepad we have once again feathering not not like the worst feathering um but the bleed is pretty sort of strong coming through there but then again every ink has bled through this paper so not really surprising on this one Let's talk about these comparisons now. So I put it against two different sorts of brown. First, the Diamine Saddle Brown, which I really like. It's sort of like a warm chocolatey brown. You can see when it pulled here, we get a lot of this sort of grey and, you know, almost gold sort of colours coming through, you know, very reminiscent from the chromatography there. If you look at the standard writing, you know, it's not that different really to the, uh, to the Diamine. And the other ink I put here is a KWZ Cappuccino, um, which is sort of like the more greeny brown. Which, so we get like a mix of those two sort of colours coming through in something like Pretzel here. Now, uh, what do I score this ink? I've given this ink 2.5 out of 5. Now, I have to say, when I use this ink on Toma River, I really like it. When I use it on Midori, I really like it. It performs well. Like on the back of this Toma River, there's nothing coming through. There's ghosting, of course. It's that, that sort of paper. But there's no bleeding. There's no feathering. It looks great on this paper. So on truly fountain pen friendly paper, this ink looks beautiful. And the colour is great. I like it. But there is a lot of bleed on other paper. As I said here, it passes because, you know, it's a nice ink looking ink. It's a great colour. And, you know, on the Toma River in Midori, it has nice performing properties. And there are other papers that would be exactly the same on. But bleeding is a bit of an issue. So 2.5. My enjoyment of this ink on Toma River is closer to a 4. But with those other papers, that really does, unfortunately. So just bring the score down. So if you use Toma River paper, if you use finer nibs, uh, if you don't mind sort of like a slightly wetter feel on the page, this is a lovely ink. And as I said, amazing value at that price uh, and interesting color. As a lot of the Birmingham Pen Company inks are interesting colors. I will give them that 100%. They have one of the most unique color palettes going around. This was Birmingham Pen Company's Soft Pretzel. I hope you found this video interesting and useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications button if you want to stay up to date with the videos that I produce. Please feel free to get in touch using any of the platforms listed below. You can find me on Instagram or Twitter at the underscore offstage underscore me, or you can contact me on any of my videos here or drop me an email, which is listed down below. If you've got products you think I should be looking at, or if there's a way you'd like to support the channel by sponsoring a review or providing items for review, like the Birmingham Pen Company did with these inks, I would love to hear from you. In the meantime, enjoy your pens and your inks, and I'll talk to you soon.